So it's uh Joel casting news, Ted. Okay. It's uh Snyder Cut, obviously. Probably start with Snyder Cut, Joel, Gina Carano firing. We'll touch on that. And uh this House of the Dragon casting news. So So Ted, what do you think of the Gina Carano situation? Figured I'd just let you go off for like fifteen, twenty minutes on your own. That'd unfiltered. Be on it? Yeah. yeah, right. Tackle both far sides. Away from that. I feel like you, you kind of understand both sides of the aisle here. Well, I need a great uniter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, all right. <laughs> it's well, everyone else. It's just everyone I else wasn't going to say it. Everyone else can voice an opinion, and then they don't get fired. But if someone voices an opinion, and she gets fired. I get it. It's what you want to do with your, to your own company, but it is what it is. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the. <laughs> sucks. That she was so good. It sucks. Was she though? I liked her. She was a good side character. Did her mission, did her job, got out of there. I guarantee if they got another, like, fighter or WWE wrestler yeah. to play that character, you would be Rousey. Even, like, oh, Cara Dune, new haircut? <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Nerd 2 Podcast. I am Bo Oliver, joined here today with Aaron, the Nerd 2 Monkey, and Teddy. And we are back to, co- to cover the world of movies, TV, video games. Hopefully I don't bite my tongue getting through this opening. And, uh, yeah, you can listen to the podcast, Spotify, iTunes, Google Podcasts, or just watch and listen on YouTube and follow us on all the social medias, Nerd Soup everywhere, except for the email. But, yeah, Nerd Soup Monkey, Teddy Nerd Soup, Bo Soup, follow me on Letterboxd, that's the most important place to follow me. And, yeah, got a lot of stories to talk about. We had a, we had a couple scheduling conflicts, and, you know, that happens when Mother Nature gets in the way, life gets in the way. Yeah. But we're back to podcast, and, like I said, the stories were just piling up. We got a, It's like Christmas morning here on the podcast. Ooh, Snyder Cut. Ooh, Gina Carano. Oh. <laughs> Snyder Cut's like the... Lump of coal? No, I was going to say like the PS5. <laughs> it's the PS2 and the PS3 taped together. <laughs> you're, you're ready to hate it. No, you want to hate it. I, Do you want to hate it? No, I would never go into a movie saying I'm, I'm actively trying to hate this. You just don't expect it? Yeah, what a, fuck you after what you did to me with Batman v Superman. I hyped that up to everyone. <laughs> everyone I knew. Bad Baby Superman, March 26th. Got my tickets a Be month there. in advance. Yeah. <laughs> that was so depressing waking up to that like, 40% Rotten Tomato score. Yeah, dude. I, I, remember, I didn't know I got it. Oh, for Batman vs. Superman? Yeah. Oh, all right. Aaron tried to spin it as there was only like 11 reviews. <laughs> <laughs> what was there, 1,000? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's like six out of the 11 were bad. <laughs> it's just like... Uh, yeah, oh, those wow. are the haters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those are all the haters at first. And then we wake up the next day, it's at 26. <laughs> Oof. Yeah. <laughs> that was a disappointing morning. But what about this Sunday morning, waking up to the old, old Snydery Snyder and all over us? I'm optimistic. Granny goodness. Everything looks good, but uh, Steppenwolf. He looks like the poop from Men in Black. <laughs> you know that guy from the second Men in Black? I'm trying to remember, but I don't. He's like, you look like shit. Yeah, it's Correction, okay. Yeah, you yeah. look like shit. <laughs> right. Yeah, no, he does. I'll tell you what, I got more excited just from, like, the black suit Superman, like, quick yeah. thing he showed us, like, two days ago than I did this whole trailer. <laughs> but, you know, it's it's so close. It's, what, a month away now? Yeah, yeah, a month away. Well, it's dropping the 18th, is, right? Yeah, so about a month away. It's dropping in, three se- like, three different hours, right? Is that what it is? No, nah, they're going to just drop it all at once. Four-hour oh. Snyder. Um, wow. Oh, four hours. I don't want to watch that. <laughs> That's the <laughs> one. It's, um, that guy from IndieWire is going to be really happy to hear that. I don't think it was a great trailer, but there were definitely some intriguing parts to it. And I think seeing like how much dark side we get with the Joker, he said the thing. <laughs> he said the thing. I actually like the new look. I like the Jad Little Joker look, actually. It's much better than Suicide Squad look, but... He looks disturbing in this one. Yeah, it's damaged. Yeah. But not damaged anymore because they took the, the tattoo off. I wonder if he's going to be, damaged. all of his scenes are going to be before Suicide Squad and flashbacks with Batman. Well, that one scene was during Batman's nightmare sequence, right? Mm-hmm. So are they bringing the nightmare sequence to life? Because that was the leaked script that the movie ends with Darkseid sending Superman back to Earth and Superman does take control. And then part two is them trying to, I guess, knock Superman out of the the Darkseid hypnosis. Mm. So... <laughs> I can't even trying to think of the timelines for these movies. Just I mean, just little shit, but like shit like that. I'm not expecting it to be the greatest movie of all time, but I think there's gonna be a lot of cool stuff, different characters, shit like black suit Superman, different interactions between the Joker, Ben Affleck's Joker, and 
Ben Affleck's Batman and Jared Leto's Joker. You know, Cyborg looks sick too. I like how Cyborg looks. That's what I'm looking forward to. He most. was trending for uh, because the CGI looked bad. Really? Yeah. I didn't think I'm excited to see him more on screen. I can yeah. care less. I'm, I'm going to be very forgiving of the CGI. But you mentioned, you know, all the cool things that we see in this trailer. We know that they're not going anywhere with these things. Maybe down the road. Maybe if Ava DuVernay gets her New Gods movie made. But Dark Side, Granny Goodness, they're just going to be momentarily in this movie. I can't imagine they have big roles. And that's the thing with Snyder. His whole style is just relying on things that aren't his. It's just, you even make this point about Batman v Superman. You like it for the characters. He brings nothing to this world. Someone needs to b- build a time machine and stop yeah. that man from ever reading Frank Miller's Batman because that's all he wants to do. And it's not only with Batman, it's with everyone. Everyone has to be Frank Miller's Batman. So everyone going is going crazy over the Bat Tank. <laughs> yeah. Great. He doesn't bring any... He does. That's why I just can't get excited. I mean, if it's good, it's good. Um, But like I said, it's going to be the first good movie he's made ever. <laughs> in my opinion. So <laughs> it's like going to a restaurant where you get food poisoning four four times in a row and thinking this fifth time though. <laughs> but the food's good. You just yeah. want to get food it poisoning. Good. No, that's the other thing. Yeah, the food tastes like shit and it poisons you. Well, why are you going to keep going to the restaurant? Funny coloring books, I guess. <laughs> Those coloring books yeah. just keep bringing people back. Hot waitresses. <laughs> you get the crayon with the uh the table mat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Snyder is Hooters with but the wings are terrible. <laughs> At least Hooters got good wings. I've never been, actually. <laughs> it's all right. I've just heard from other people. They're okay? Yeah, it's all right. Okay. Not the best. Applebee's is the best. Uh, well, Ted, you... you <laughs> That's s- re- I hate you, that Applebee's. Wow, the holy best shit. Thing. shit, yeah. They do have good... They have pretty good wings, yeah, but... keep backtracking already, the second you say it. <laughs> not backtracking, it's just to say they're the best is just absurd. They're so thin sauce. The I, don't know, I don't know what more you want. What? And they're big. Nice they're, big wings. They're nice big sauce. wings. I like... Well, like chain wings? Is that what we're going on? Yeah, like Buffalo Wild Wings. Okay. Hooters. Chain wings. Wings over is fucking fantastic. All right, I take back what I said, too. Wings over is the best one. Yeah. Wingstop. Not wings over. Wingstop. Wingstop. Is yeah, the Wingstop's better than Applebee's. Isn't that Rick Ross's place? Is he it? He owns Wingstop, yeah. I didn't know that. Like oh. the whole Wingstop? No, he's got a couple of franchises. Mm. Good for him. Yeah. 15 or 20 chains. Yeah, Buffalo Wild Wings is garbage. <laughs> I'm excited to see that. I'm, I'm excited just to see another superhero movie, though. It's, it's going to be nice to watch. Just sit down and watch. Outback has great wings. <laughs> ben Affleck is my yes. favorite Batman, so I'm excited to see the Bat Tank. I'm excited <laughs> to see him fight more with his gadgetry in this movie. But yeah, yeah, I guess it's a Justice League movie, right? Yeah, and it's, I mean, it's, it's Superman, too. You're getting, you're getting Superman again. We're getting Henry, Henry Cavill again, which I'm really excited for. <laughs> this I wonder might if this, be the last time we see him. I don't know. You, I wonder if this has a good, uh, a good pull. Does Henry Cavill come back? Are they going to make another one? Well, there were talks about Henry Cavill appearing in Shazam 2 in a supporting role. But the director of Shazam 2, David Sandberg, David F. Sandberg, said that he doesn't know anything about that. <laughs> really? And da- <laughs> he seems like a guy who's been very honest about his... I mean, he talks about how there's not really much collaboration between directors. Yeah. So we could have guessed that. But even Ben Affleck, people are saying, hey, this is, for a lot of people, it's their best Batman, their favorite Batman. If this movie comes out, it gets like ninety five percent of Rotten Tomatoes. It's a smash hit. And Do you get like, the game hey, together? Yeah. <laughs> There's nothing good that could come out of this. <laughs> <laughs> I never. I, it's either I you make the up. universe even messier, or the movie stinks. I haven't kept up on it because I mean it happened so long ago. But I don't remember how Affleck departed with being Batman. Did Did he want to be? Did he want to keep doing this? It's like, <laughs> are you serious? Yeah. You really just wipe the memory of the every, last two years of I all mean, the news we've covered? It's a lot. We've covered like legit like every stage of the Ben Affleck Batman. Yeah, how long ago was that? I mean, it's you, you want, want us to recap that? We need a whole recap like 10, 15 minute video. So yes or no? You know what I forgot about? <laughs> Does Affleck want to be it or not? It's a very complicated question. You can't answer yes or no. Uh. You know what I forgot about? <laughs> so he can come back. I didn't, <laughs> yeah. So the door's open. <laughs> yes, basically, yeah, the door's still open. <laughs> The door's always open. Yeah, Why don't true. we bring him back Christian Bale? That's the inevitable thing. Well, yeah, right? I just said, I remember, like, <laughs> Michael Keaton's coming back. People, I forgot about that. Right. That's just been out of my mind for since we talked about it. But I was thinking to myself Wait, I thought the Michael other day, Keaton got, got uh, debunked. I thought he wasn't coming back. No, the, what was debunked was that he was going to be kind of the Batman moving forward. Oh. There's so many fucking rumors <laughs> that come out. But seriously, why not bring back Bale? That's the guy. If you want to go where, like, if Flash is going to mess up the universes, 
I'm sure you could throw a bag at Bale, get him back in the back in the fold. That would he's be worth, so he's cool worth to it. see. I mean, no one's was the best best universe. But with this movie, like I said, the the shots look different. Shots that we've already seen, they got different color palettes. People are upset about the aspect ratio. He's keeping it with the IMAX aspect ratio, even though nobody's going to see this yeah. in IMAX. So it's just going to look like 4.3 on our televisions, which is going to piss me off. <laughs> um, so um, less than a month away, man. Are we watching I'm, it together? Hell no, we ain't watching This ain't a together movie. Yes, it is. This is it's the it, Snyder Cut. It could have been if it wasn't Snyder. Well, the day before, I'll text you guys, and then they we'll will cancel day off. Yeah, we'll probably cancel the day <laughs> off, as it usually goes with us. And, uh, any other things you guys want to bring up about this, about this trailer? My brother can't wait for it. Well, your brother's a big... Uh, He's a big Snyder guy, right? Yeah. He's a huge but he's also, DC guy. Like, but he likes huge. Marvel, too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, but his DC is like us with Marvel. Okay. That Obsessed makes sense. But yeah, Snyder Cut trailer. I just, I mean, it's it wasn't a great trailer, but like I said, I think they got like shit like the little teases we got, I thought were much better. <laughs> I was getting excited. I, I'm on board for it, well, and I'm looking forward to it. This is mo- uh, this is news we have here to definitely get excited about. It's casting for The Last of Us HBO series that is also coming out, I guess, on HBO, HBO Max. Pedro Pascal has been cast as Joel, and Bella Ramsey from Game of Thrones, both both of these actors from Game of Thrones, has been cast as Ellie. Was, so, I think those are spot on. Somebody tweeted the other day that he, Pedro Pascal was so memorable in those six episodes that the jumping off for his career was bigger than any of the actors from the show, the actors who had lead roles. And it is true, man. The The amount of roles that he's that he's taken on over the past couple of years, and now this role with Joel, it's another great role. And I think it's, another, it's a great choice to bring this character to life. I really wonder if those other main characters in Thrones just aren't taking work. Or I mean, you got to think they're going out for some stuff, right? <laughs> like, they can't be be relying on Game of Thrones because it is odd that you don't see him really anywhere you see Amelia Clark here and there it's Sophie Turner here and there Sophie Kit's Turner been in some Phoenix, stuff maybe Richard Madden had a big year last year with Bodyguard so not like Pedro though no not like Pedro <laughs> yeah yeah no, he's uh, he may be the best actor to come out of this show and it's just a, it's a chance thing he seems to be the guy who can fit more roles um, he, he's a dynamic talent so there are a lot of available roles for him. I think the most important thing, though, is is, is how he says Ellie. That's that's you. <laughs> yeah, that's probably how they casted him. Just like send like a two second video of you saying Ellie. <laughs> Say and if Ellie it works, then times. yeah, you got <laughs> Hugh the job. Jackman nailed every other part of the role. Yeah. They like say Ellie. He's like Ellie. <laughs> <laughs> Just no, Hugh. It's not late, Miz. Stop singing. Well, yeah, it was kind of weird how the news came out. I think Bella Ramsey was current, confirmed before Pedro Pascal, and I think I mean talk about supporting characters kind of stealing the show when they're in a scene uh, Leanna Mormont did that every time she was on on screen she had a, such a commanding screen presence for someone of that age and uh and the biggest drama in the world yeah and not too much experience and she fucking nailed it so there's obviously a lot of talent there and you know even before Pedro was casted Mahershal Ali was rumored and I wonder if that has to do with like maybe it's like they're planning on a multiple season run and I think Mahershal Ali is arguably the best actor working today, and he probably didn't want to commit like like he did with True Detective. That was just a one season, and then he can work yeah. on other projects as well. So that would have been a, a great casting too. I th- yeah, I think that I think Pedro Pascal is a fantastic actor, but Mahershal Ali he's he's like S tier right now. So you kind of got like the two best options here, kind of pick out of a hat. When I woke up to this news, the first thing that I saw was Mahershal Ali passes on the role, so I was disappointed. But I couldn't even believe that he, you know, this was something that was happening. This is not someone that was rumored or that a lot of people were talking about. But then when it's when when you hear about it, it's kind of a no brainer choice. So but he passed on it. Uh, I don't really know. I was. In, uh, I kind of hope he passed on it because that would have been encouraging that they offered it to him. Right. And but he passes on it. with Pedro, with Pedro, <laughs> with Pedro, like you said, he's he's got the voice. He's got the southern role from Kingsman too. So we know that he can do that. And he's just a, an incredible actor. And this role, naturally, it just fits. Being the stepfather escorting a child across uh, a dangerous terrain. With you think Pedro's being... trying to break a record? I think so, the man. shows to, to do and to have like an escorting movie, escorting show. The, the chemistry between them is going to be so important. But like you said with Liana Mormont, that character is, is similar to Ellie. Wise beyond their years, feisty but also lovable. Mm-hmm. Um, That's Ellie to a T, too. 
Right, yeah. So I, I think that they both have shown that they, they can play roles similar to the characters in The Last of Us. And you wonder if it is going to be a multiple season type of show, where if they're going to kind of try and fill in the gap between one and two, you wonder how season one ends. Does it end with the same ending as the video game? And then, like you you can't just skip to part two because Ellie does age four years and you got your Ellie with Bella Ramsey. You would... You would think that you want to keep her around. Mm -hmm. You don't. You don't want to recast with another eighteen-year-old. But those are questions for the writing room, and I'm sure they're having fun trying to answer them. Yeah, I'm excited to see where they go with the show. Would you consider this to be her breakout role if she nails it? Not like I mean, Thrones. Like she was very much a side character, and this it one could she's be. going to be a main character. And this, this could, could be a chance. This could be a big show, man. Yeah. I think the writing. A lot of people are going to latch on to the writing because it just pulls you in. I wonder how they market this. I think they, I think they got to market the hell out of this, and I really hope they do. People were upset about HBO Max apparently not marketing the Snyder Cut. That's getting crazy pull, though, anywhere. Anyway. I think it's just getting marketing from people Everywhere. discussing it, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, just Zack Snyder's Twitter account, really. <laughs> Seriously. With The Last of Us, you have the built-in advantage of it being a zombie show. So that's yeah. what you push. You don't push that it's <laughs> that the characters are going to be just ripped apart mentally while mm -hmm. experiencing yes. it. <laughs> that's true. You just market it as father daughter trying to survive and then that's how you bring people in oh zombies they look scary oh pedro pascal and then you know when you have your fucking guts ripped out and stomped on and then <laughs> put back inside of your stomach rearranged and it's gonna be fun for people who haven't experienced it <laughs> yeah and it's always like a hard it's always like um difficult trying to balance when you adapt a video game how how much of video game you take yeah and how much of the story i mean assassin's creed just kind of they took. Uh, uh, we all know what happened with Assassin's Creed, <laughs> but <Did we? laughs> I think that because you have that built-in story there, and it's fed, the Last of Us Part One is a, just a tremendous story. But at the at the same time, it's like I feel like some fans would, would appreciate maybe them taking some creative liberties and kind of maybe diverging. Kind of, it all ends up at the same place, but have like a new, different experience. I'm not gonna lie, I would be a hundred percent fine with them taking the same exact story and just making it live action. From both, both one and two. Yeah, I wonder if they go. I wonder if they try and combine Last of Us One and Last of Us Two into one season. And I wonder if the like there's probably no show time, like show running's out yet. But like, like I said, with the it. gap between one and two, it is. I think what huge. they can do is they can show them going back to Tommy's, how they kind of uh, adjusted to to living in that. Was Tommy casted? Yeah, you still need a casting for Tommy. Yeah. Still need Henry and Sam. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if they want to stretch out kind of where you go two seasons for the first game. If they want to okay. get into more of the characters like Marlene, what she was doing with the Fireflies, exploring the politics there. Maybe exploring the breakout. Maybe you, you start like a couple months before that, leading up to the breakout. Who knows? Good, Who knows yeah. how they can do it? But with a team like Craig Mazin, obviously coming over from Chernobyl, did such a fantastic job with that series. And Neil Druckmann, the guy who wrote the video game. That's that's always so important, man. Uh, to yeah, get, getting their take on it. 100%. Yes. You see it all the time with video game adaptations and, and comic book adaptations when they weren't doing so well that they just didn't care to Dude, get that opinion, get they, those opinions from the creators. Yeah, exactly. These are the guys that know this story so well. And how do you – I never understand how do you not – Go to the creators of it, and even think what do you think this would work with this story? That's only I don't understand like why people are so, uh, like their pride just like takes over them. It's like they they don't want to. It's the studio, help. man. It's the fucking studio. Sandberg was talking about the Shazam director was talking about this the other day that um, the studio wanted him to put in a Queen song, whereas he wanted another band, and the studio won. He was like, well, you know, it's it's Queen, so I wasn't too disappointed. <laughs> yeah, but you know that's a small example the larger examples are you know studios coming in and it's like avatar avatar was a waste of money and it's like they they did nothing with the creators of avatar and they just and you see how that turned out right yeah and it looks like they're doing the same thing with the netflix show that's why everyone was praising the yeah. the new live action avatar show is because they were bringing in the creators and then they asked they them. left <laughs> <laughs> yeah then they're like creative differences sorry <laughs> Well, um, we'll see. I mean, we've always talked about how television is the perfect platform for video game adaptations rather 100%. than a, a two-hour feature. So I think that we, we've seen it with a couple of the projects, but as, as more and more of these are adapted on television, we can. I, I think it's the, the best avenue for telling these stories. Yeah, and if you want to skip ahead for this spoiler for part two, if you haven't played it yet, the ending of that game 
ends with a cliffhanger. So the world is going to grow bigger, you would assume, with a yeah. part three. Mm-hmm. Uh, not not necessarily a cliffhanger, but you that can these make it. stories the are open. continue. Right, exactly. So I think that maybe Druckmann may have a, an ending in mind, depending on how far ahead he is with part three. Um, and that's what they could be building to with the show. Is part three happening? I think part three, it's not confirmed, but I think it is happening. Yeah. You would think with the success of part two. And I just want to, I mean... Ended, I would like a part three to play it because of how good the games are, and I got no worries that they're going to nail it. But you know, it's 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 tough because of how good one and two ended. You know, it's hard playing a third and not liking it. And a lot of people room. don't like part two, so I wonder if they're. I wouldn't say not like it. I just think it was highly. Uh, what, what's the what's the word when you split? Divisive. Uh, I think it was just uh, highly divisive. Was like it was people on one side of the fence and people people on, on the other side of the fence with how they ended it and the route they. I went. wonder if that has died down. Because I, I kind of guessed that it would be a, an, a, kind of an initial thing, an initial reaction, and then as people got over Joel's death, because that's what it was. People just knew the spoiler and decided yeah. they hated it. Exactly. It wasn't like a Last Jedi thing where the dust settled and people were like, "Okay, we don't like this." Mm-hmm. Was people just wanted to not like it, and then y- you when you see people discussing part two on Twitter, it's usually mostly positive. Yeah, but I, I respect think gonna, what they did. I respect what they did, man. It's a huge leap, killing the reason why. Uh, the first one was so good, <laughs> and it was Joel, and you kill him off like a half hour into part two, and this, and, the, and the game was still fantastic. Yeah, people Portal just amazing. got mad about that because it was a dude dying, yeah. being killed by a girl, and that was a girl lead. <laughs> yeah, that's really what it was. But you hope eventually they get to those characters. You know, Abby, people would argue is the best character of the whole franchise. So hopefully they get to a point where they can they can tell her story. But let's move on to another story here. Um. Gina Carano has been fired by Disney uh, from her role as Cara Dune in The Mandalorian. And I think this is something that we saw coming. It was kind of in, kind of inevitable. Gina Carano has been in these controversies over the past couple of months. It's no secret that she is uh, conservative. Mm-hmm. I didn't realize how open-spoken she was. She was like high, highly spoken on social media. Her social media ple- presence kind of drifted between corny, cheesy memes and just far right conspiracy theories. Yeah. <laughs> so she got the. She didn't do a good enough job of hiding it. Well, <laughs> no. she hid it from you. Yeah, I well, guess yeah. I didn't see it until she got fired. Right. She got the Ben Shapiro bag. <laughs> to do a movie together, right? No, yeah. I guess that is movie news, right? Yeah. She's going to produce a, a movie for the Daily Wire, written by J.K. Rowling. But yeah, she finally. It's something. Yeah, like you said, it, you kind of can see that coming because she was very outspoken and. I think that there were, even like while the Mandalorian was going on, I saw a lot of people like upset with her and that like it's like oh, I love the Mandalorian, but I hate Gina Carano and get her off the show and stuff like that. So it was well, kind that of initial controversy was she was approached by someone asking her to put her pronouns in her biography, which is usually something that people do in solidarity with the transgender community. And she said, no, I don't want to do that. And then she claimed to have been harassed by people saying that, you know, you're a bigot, you're transphobic because you won't do that. So she kind of fanned the flames by putting beep, boop, beep in her biography, kind of making fun of the process. That was the first controversy where people wanted her fired. They they claimed that she was being transphobic. I think she was. I think she, it gets to a point when you have a platform that you just can't use it to bully people online. Yeah. You have to step off eventually. You have to learn to say no to certain debates. And it's no secret that Hollywood is a big liberal club. A lot of people in Hollywood are liberal. A lot of bad people in Hollywood are liberal. We could talk about Joss Whedon and the accusations levied at him and how the self-righteousness has been kind of undermined by his actions. But when it comes to Gina Carano being persecuted for her politics, as people have said, a lot of the shit that she was promoting is just nonsense. To me, that's just not politics. A lot mm. of the things that the, the final meme of her being comparing herself to a Jewish person during the Holocaust, like you're just giving me nonsense here. Right. And when you're working for a company like Disney, <laughs> s- sometimes you just can't post shit like yeah. that. You can make that point in a different way. Part of me thinks that like, like she knew it was coming too, because you got to think like publicist agents had to be all over her. Be like, hey, chill out. And or this is going to happen. You know, you can read the tea leaves. And she just didn't, and she got fired. So Yeah, she got fired by a company that people are bring, bringing this up. You can find hypocrisy in everything. Yeah, I bet that, she did it on purpose, knowing she'll get fired. So it's another like thing she can talk about, saying they fired me because of what I believe in. 
some shit like that. Give up the fucking Star Wars money for that. Well, that's the thing. The the things that she was pushing are things that are very hard for anyone to believe in. She wasn't fired because she believes in lower taxes and less government and more freedom. She was fired because she was just making ridiculous claims. Nonsense. Stuff that's not politics. Right. And, you know, it's... Yeah, I I mean, I think, you know, I have family, I have friends who don't agree with me politically, and you can... You can have a debate there. You know, you could talk, you can have discussions and stuff like that. But some things I just look at and I'm like, that's like you said, it's like, why are you, why are you, I'm not going to debate that with you. There's some things that are just too much and, and to do it that consistently and really lack any kind of awareness or remorse, kind of doubling down on certain things after you're getting called out on something. It's, you know, it's obviously something that she didn't care about or that she didn't care about appeasing anybody else and it got her fired. And now you look at Mandalorian season three, are they going to recast the character? Are they going to just send her away and just write her off? So she's, she's an easy enough character just to write off too. I mean, she was very much in the the coattails this season. Yeah. Like I said, in the cold opening, you can get any other (laughs) U UFC fighter wrestler, Someone who's buff to play that character. Or you could just... That character doesn't necessarily ever have to appear in Star Wars again. Yeah. I mean, Mando is very much doing his own thing. Well, she gets approached to join the... The... Um, the Republic, right? Yes. So maybe you could be like, She's oh, yeah. basically what? She's like sheriff? Yeah. Well, yeah. she gets approached she's to join them, so maybe you can just be like, oh, yeah, she joined them, and she's off doing missions with them. Right, yeah, they, you can easily explain that. And then when you bring her back in three years, she's just uh, someone else. Yeah, Fresh Prince did it. Mando can do it. They should do the laugh track. <laughs> like, she walks in. Have Mando check the camera. It's like, something different. Something's different about you. <laughs> what happened to your accent? <laughs> Let's move on here to our next story. We have Game of Thrones, House of the Dragon casting news. And this was exciting to see. We have uh, Steve Toussaint. And kick my feet up for this one, right? Steve Toussaint, Eve Best, uh, Rice Ifans, and Sononia Mizuno um, from Devs, Ex Machina. And these are actors that have been around the block. And this was exciting. It was It's always exciting to get more news about this Game of Thrones spinoff because it's the House of the Dragon, man. It's going to be dragons. It's going to be political machinations. And now we're getting faces to the characters. Yeah, no, that's always exciting. I think that... When this show starts to pick up steam and the cast really fills out and we get more information about it and filming starts, I think filming starts in April, I think that a lot of people might catch the bug again. Oh, I'm hoping. I'm hoping. I'm catching the bug and I'm fucking love this show. It's yeah. 15 million per episode hmm. for the show. I, I remember crazy. them saying that they wanted to start with the season eight budget for the season one mm-hmm. spinoff. It's the most and- expensive show to date. The biggest casting here is Toussaint as Lord Corliss Valerion, who is uh, House Valerion. It's kind of like the sister house to House Targaryen. They descend from House Targaryen, right? Yeah, there's, there's similarities in um, appearances and stuff like that. So. Right. And he's known as a sea snake. Apparently, he's a, he was a great explorer. Mm-hmm. And like I said, he's the head of House Valerion, which is the richest house at this time. They say richer than House Lannister. Um, you have Ifans as Otto Hightower, who is the Hand of the King. Uh, you have Eve Best as Princess Rhaenerys Valerion, and she was a character that was actually, she was passed over for the throne, right? In favor of Darren, who is yeah. currently sitting on the throne. She, and then, so then she goes on to marry uh, Corlys and become the lady of House Valerion. I think Otto Hightower is the father of Alison Hightower, who plays a very big role. Right, yes, this, that's so. going to be, um, what's her face? Olivia Cook. Okay. And also Mizuno as Masaria. Masaria is a character, it's uh, a foreigner, comes from the East, and she's someone that I'm not too familiar with. No, I haven't really, there's really much. Apparently she becomes an unlikely ally to Prince Darren, Prince Damon. So, yeah, a lot of these, like, the novella itself, I've read it a couple times now, but not in a while, but I think there's, like, a lot here that that you can expand on it, and I think, I guess we'll get, we'll get a sense more with some of the casting news is like how vast they want to go with the world um but i mean she's she was great in devs i really like this casting she was good at she was good at maniac also another underrated show but and uh you know the kind of the built-in tension here you have a character who was passed over for the throne so you know going right into episode one 
like the Lannisters and the Starks, that there's going to be a, a rivalry here. And like we said, with with these actors, they've been around the block. So that that's what you need when it comes to these characters, because the characters are so fleshed out. You need actors who can bring these these characters to life. Yeah, I wonder where they, they are going to start. I mean, you can kind of start it like where the powder keg is just about to explode. And right away, you descend into just complete another civil war with the dragons and all these different armies and such. So, so who's fighting in the civil war? T- Targaryens. So it's just Targaryens pitted against each other. It's not yeah, like two di- di- separate houses in the Targaryens. Like. Different houses have, have different uh, allegiances. Oh, okay. To who they think is the rightful heir to the throne. So, so I'm assuming Aegon is one of them, right? Is <laughs> Aegon in this? There's probably an Aegon around there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> but he's definitely thinking of the Conqueror. Right. Yeah, that's what it says here. Aegon the Conqueror. That's uh, a different time. Oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Aegon the Conqueror is about like 200 years before this show. This show is about 100 years before Game of Thrones, I think. So this one, what I'm looking at with the Civil War with King Aegon is 10,000 years before the events of Game of Thrones. Let's move on to the next story. I guess. I don't know. <laughs> you got to go you home just... and uh, read some Wikipedias. We all do, actually, because I don't really know much about the, the Targaryen Civil War. so much. <laughs> well, this story specifically is called The Dance of Dragons. Oh, okay. So This one's Fire and Blood. Yeah. Oh, God, dude. Aegon the Conqueror <laughs> is 300 years before the show. Wow. This show's going to be 100 years. That's a headache. <laughs> That's what's good about this, is that we know the ending. It's still, to a lot of people, it's un- they're unfamiliar with it. Yeah, it's kind of like... Well, even for a lot of people who don't haven't read the novella or don't know how the story plays out, it's still something where I think a lot of people look at prequels and kind of think, yeah, well, who cares what happened before the main show? Because they're going to end up where the main show starts. But I think that, you know, a good story, dragons, all the elements people loved from Game of Thrones early on, I think it's... if the, They mentioned... If they have happened. that, then it, it, I think it has a chance to be not as big, but pretty fucking big. They mention it enough in the show about... It's like everything they talk about is like what happened in the past. And like it, it makes you intrigued about what they're talking about. And that, I mean, and it's Thrones too, so I can't wait to see Thrones again. Same theme? What do you, like the same dun- opening dun- theme? Dun- yeah. No, no way. No? Yeah. Well, that sucks. You need to cook up, and you think Raymond's just going to rehash that? I don't see why not. He's got to come Star up Wars with another it. banger. Star Wars does do it, but come on, man. It's Wadi. Okay. Yeah, Look sure. what he did with Westworld. Gave us another Bang it. I want to hear that now. He was so <laughs> dope watching him live, man, when he pulled out the electric guitar. Started complimenting his score with the uh I just see him live. The old strings. Game of Thrones live, man. Oh. Yeah. I forgot you went to that actually. You showed me a video of that. I invited you and you said no. I wasn't into it then. It was after season eight. <laughs> Do you have the video? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's move on to fan questions here. What do you say? That's for the fan to decide. Yay! People, you call up to the show, you better be ready. That's what you're supposed to do. Sitting there arguing and trying to spell your name and all of this other stuff. It's not your show, it's my show. I'm giving you the the opportunity to speak your mind. Don't call up here unless you got something to say. This question here from Ricky D. Grimes. Childhood friend. What's up, Rick? What's going on, man? Uh, is Wanda, in WandaVision, is Hayward secretly evil or just an asshole desperate to keep order? Both. Yeah, this, <laughs> Can we is, say something, both? <laughs> yeah, this is something we're actually going, going to address on the review, which probably just came out maybe an hour before this, hopefully. Copyrights. Dude, I can't, I can't stand how they hide everything like that. It's like, just say what you're trying to do. <laughs> so we're all on the same page. <laughs> Could be like a <laughs> Ross situation we where... We know what's going on. He, like, he was in opposition to the Avengers in terms of kind of trying to regulate them and deciding what they can and can do in Civil War, but, I mean, he's not an evil guy, you know? I think there's a difference I just think he's there. stupid, too. Well, I think after last episode that he's... I think he there's a possibility he's in on the big plan, like the Mephisto plan, if that's actually oh. happening. Because he sees Vision coming out, and he almost looks at Vision like... I don't think I think you're coming out too early. Like I don't think you're supposed to be here. And then when the wall was kind of just covering everything, it almost feels like he wanted that to happen. Like all of this was part of the plan 
where Vision was going to be on the outskirts, and then Wanda would have to expand this. So I, I think there's a, and Darcy was looking up something right, right yeah. before Vision tried to escape, and then they cut away from that. Yeah, yeah. We don't find out if Darcy knows. Does Darcy get her memory wiped? Like, do you get your memory wiped when you go into the hex? It looks like it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Oh, that's gonna be annoying. Yeah. What yeah. what Darcy knows, but well, it's also they were doing something with Vision before Wanda broke him out. Hayward was looking at yeah. Him. Because he like he's cut up on that <laughs> on that operating table. Well, and he that's got his who, eyes in a jar, and that's who he's focusing on too. It's like right. That's he had the vibranium sensors on him to f- track where Vision is, and he's maybe trying to weaponize it and stuff like that. So, I would how mind- much can you weaponize him though? It's a little. He's it's, he's one person. What, what can you possibly get from Vision besides the ton- the, the Soul Stone? The U- Ultron uh, algorithm was pretty powerful. Almost destroyed the world. Yeah, but without Stark, who's gonna who's gonna like cipher that? Shuri. She's not gonna go with them. She's not running with them. You never know, man. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I so. wouldn't mind if he was just an asshole trying to keep order. I do love those characters. Yeah, we see it. We see it all the time. Yeah. But it's frustrating. I don't think. Yeah, he doesn't. Have, I think there's obviously an avenue for him, and they probably want to make you think that way. But if he's just a prick, then if he, he could still if, be a good character, if he's trying to keep order, then he's just an idiot. Because how do you how, like? I don't understand why you're trying to test Wanda. <laughs> it seems like he's testing her on purpose, like you said. Like he he wants her to, to lose her shit. This question here from C Gravy ninety seven: Who let the dogs out? The Baja man, right? <sighs> no, they were asking the questions. Oh shit! Like who let the dogs out? Woof, woof, if it was woof, us, woof. we wouldn't ask because we we know we would have let the dogs out. Not very good investigators. After all this time, they still haven't figured it out. I think this, they know, but I, I think, think we need a bomb, I think they got, man. you know, sometimes you get the answers you don't like. You know, with NSYNC making a comeback it's and like all a deeper conspiracy bands. there, they unturned some stones <laughs> that shouldn't have been on tone. You think the Baja men have been uh, just isolated on their own private island all They're these years holding the secrets? For the, for the good of, like, <laughs> society, they couldn't re- tell us. This is information the world needs to know. The world can't handle this question here from Wheeler Butler. Would you guys ever do a Studio Ghibli revisited? Said it correctly this time, after all the years of saying it Ghibli. Similar to the MCU and Star Wars revisited. I think so. I think that's definitely something we can do, me, Marissa, and even Anime Aaron. Anime Aaron, I like that. I Recently true. watched yeah. Spirited Away, and you enjoyed it, right? That was a while ago. <laughs> but just build it up for the pod. Okay. <laughs> do you like Titan? The latest episode? Yeah. Yeah, I did. It was good. I don't know. You know Biz Marquis in Baja Men? No. Never knew that. He sounded a Baja Men. I looked up Baja Men Network. Biz Marquis Network is 3 million. I guess he's the only Baja Men that was relevant. That can't be true. Biz Marquis is not in the Baja Men. That's, I mean, that, I could really go for a Baja Blast. <sighs> Take that up with Google. Nice crunch wrap supreme. I haven't had Bell in a while. That would be fun, though, because I think Miyazaki's first movie, his Lupin adaptation, is very underrated. Features one of the greatest, people always talk about this, car chases in cinema history. There are some movies there that I've never seen before, so that would also be fun if we kind of just... I think there's like 19 or 20 overall that they've produced. Their new one, apparently, is horrible. Really? The, um, it's it's CG. It's mm. computer animation, which they swore they would never do. Really? I, That's I think, surprising. Bismarck is not in Baja, man. <laughs> uh, wh- why would it say that? <laughs> why would Bismarck come the up? The internet can bop you, man. Dyson Knight and Marvin Prosper and Rick Carey. This question here from Julianne Doodles, also a friend of the show. Look at that. All our friends tuning in. If you can get dropped into if you can get dropped into any fantasy TV show, what would it be? Anime included, of course. It's always sunny in Philadelphia. It's not a fantasy <laughs> TV show. But it kind of is. It is. Yeah, they basically live in a fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> Seinfeld's a fantasy world too. Attack? Oh, Jesus it's a Christ. terrible world yeah. to live in. Pokemon? I think Attack on Titan... A Pokemon would be fun. Yeah. That's the, that's the world to go I on. want my own little team so bad, dude. Yeah, you get, like, your, your two best friends. Um, us three? It'd be us three. Like, who's the main character? Probably have to be me, right? You gotta put Nash in there, right? Not the best character, but I'm the main. Nash is, like, the um, the wacky Professor fourth Oak? guy that comes in and out. I, I think um, you'd be Professor, Professor Oak and me, Aaron, and Nash. Oak, the, uh, yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Guys are my kids. I'm guiding you. Yeah. And I'm banging one of your moms on the low. Was he? <laughs> oh, look up those <laughs> theories, man. 
I always thought he might have been like a pedophile. <laughs> Oak? Yeah. That's always Bunch. hanging around with a bunch of kids. Well, it's his nephew and uh, the villain guy that you... Your enemy. Gary. Gary, yeah. <laughs> Game of Thrones wouldn't be fun. No. I think Attack oh, on God, Titan... No. I wouldn't last in Game of Thrones. ...rivals the Game of Thrones world, like, world you don't want to be in. Harry Potter would be a fun world. But you gotta be a wizard. Yeah, no. Not well, it does say TV show. Peacetime in the Shire? Oh, boy, the Shire. They were living, man. It was just every night it was a carnival... Gandalf came by with his weed and his fireworks. Mm-hmm. And it seems like Dragon Ball Z wouldn't be fun unless you were a Super Saiyan. Right, I'm thinking My Hero Academia, where 80% of the world has superpowers, I would 100% fall into that 20%. <laughs> oh, me too. Just be some fucking asshole. It all might be like... Have you had a power? It'd suck. Become a cop. <laughs> uh, this question here from BR underscore U underscore no. WandaVision or Mandalorian? You did this the other day on the poll, and I was very upset with you. WandaVision won. By like two percent. Wow, I, over, neck and neck. Over a thousand, thousand polls. They, I don't know why people are pitting these two shows together. You have to. It's Disney. <laughs> I guess so. Like they're recent. They're Disney Plus shows. Why it's is very, Disney putting? It's gas very out? different in the way they're structured than the stories they tell and how connected they are and stuff like that. But Wandavision six for six, man, it's flawless right now. I, I like Wandavision for just how well it fits into the MCU and its implications on the. Like a greater scale, yeah. Uh, moving Marvel. forward, especially, Mandalorian is kind of a prequel because we are went past that with the sequel trilogy. So yeah. it's not really. I mean, you're getting you're delving into other things and you're furthering lore with, I guess, Grogu and things like that. But but you can say that Mandalorian is like one division right directly now. impacts the next a- anything surrounding Marvel. Mandalorian doing, doing is also setting way. up Star Wars for the for the future, though. Too, I think just like an episode on episode basis. I think. They try to approach and they try to. Um, they have different goals in mind, so it's hard to compare them. I'm gonna say Wanda side to side. I'm gonna say Wandavision solely because I haven't missed a Friday at nine o'clock yet. I would wait a couple of days to watch Mando. I cannot wait to watch Wandavision every Friday. Yeah, like if. Both shows set out to accomplish what they were trying to accomplish perfectly. Yeah, exactly. Then, even then, it's they're just so different that it's hard for me to compare them. But like you, th- you guys said, I'm just more invested in WandaVision. Mm. I really am because of the larger implications being connected to the MCU, and I think just the the way that they're telling, they're, like, there's been no action scenes yeah, at man. all. That's crazy. Like, barely any action. Like these characters are just walking around and looking. Startled and dude, it's so scared and it's the complete opposite of what what Marvel is, right? And they're killing it. <laughs> yeah, they've done it's it so, so well, right? Yeah, really, just trying to explore what you know. What can you do in this genre? What can Mandalorian what can is do? more like this is what you're supposed to do. There's so intrigue on Wanda right now. What can she do? What can't she do? How much is she controlling? Never knew I needed a Wanda show. Not many people did, but. Glad we got it now. Me too. This question here from Connor underscore Casey. Do you think we'll ever see a Tom Brady documentary series similar to The Last Dance? Oh, it's inevitable. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he deserves it. And it just became even more interesting because it's not only the the, <laughs> the Patriots dynasty anymore. Now there can be a Last Dance part two. It's, I want to know what happened behind the scenes in the Patriots organization, man. <sighs> I'm dying to know what really happened. That's the thing, though. Cool. If it's, it's going to be another puff piece... Like, they did go into some of the darker other aspects of Jordan, but most of it was just, like, praising him for how great he was. Well, that's why the target Brady has shit, too, you know? Yeah. So, if they want to get deep into it and kind of, you know, he's great, but let's go deeper in on a lot of these other things. But that, I feel like the scandals for the Patriots are even more messed up than anything. You, The Bulls, you could have gotten more into his gambling, I guess. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, the behind-the-scenes stuff was... A lot of it was in the open for that time, so it was kind of just giving us a reminder of what they all had to deal with in that final season. Scotty sitting out, and obviously the battles they had with Kraus. Mm-hmm. But the pay- I mean, Belichick is so closed off. Um, I think when he and just- their scandals were were covered up by the NFL. Yeah, like Spygate. Like they deleted all the footage. <laughs> I bet yeah. you if they didn't have, I think it was, was it voicemails or texts from the from the ball equipment guy. I bet if, if they didn't have that, that's I think that's the only reason why they got in trouble with Brady talking to the ball equipment manager or the ball. Whoever, I don't know what to call. Destroyed him. his phone. I mean, there's yeah. other things, and <laughs> but just that whole like, 
I think that it but just... you get into like a lot of like oh he was six round draft pick how he became as good as he did and you know Belichick obviously is probably his biggest relationship or someone that people when you think of Brady you think of Belichick so you can explore it, it would make for a great documentary but I would kind of like it to be more and I think the Tiger Woods doc got got criticized because it was too on a negative too yeah that that was my biggest problem with it I mean it is what it is. But they weren't. It was like all about shaming Tiger Woods. So you got to find that balance of. Well, when did they start getting a negative? When they talked about 2008. Well, when they, they talked about the scandals, the yeah, cheating. Yeah. Well, it's they focused on that. <laughs> they got so heavy into that. Like, See, I, about it. I say to this day that whole Tiger Woods scandal. Listen, cheating on your wife is never great, and the way that it was brought to the public, you know, when he slammed in in his own driveway, but still so overblown. Hundred percent. Like at the end of the day, that's between two people, and the way that the media just became obsessed with tearing this man down was just so ugly have you seen the britney spears talk on hulu no dude it's what the what the media did to her kfc said it perfectly it's like what they did to her back then would never happen now the way they went into her bro there were reporters asking her about her sex life and her cup stars on on tv and the the governor of maryland said live that she wanted to shoot britney spears and kill her on on her interview, <laughs> that's it, Britney Spears. When you think of that individual, if if it's like she's not even real, it's like she's a myth. Yeah, like this person she's who been talked away for like bred and now. made to be a child star, teen star, who totally abused by the media, by fans, by people in her own life. I felt bad for her. The fact that that she's come out and not unscathed, but the fact that she's still standing, it's admirable because of what she's gone through. We always talk about this with like uh, LeBron. You know how he's an anomaly of a child star because these child stars, man, it just fucking can destroy them. Even not going through what Britney went through, like look at, you know, Amanda Bynes. Mm-hmm. Look at Shia LaBeouf. And- I'm pretty sure Amanda Bynes is like on the deep end right now. <laughs> She's not doing too good. Lindsay I Lohan. I mean, there's it's terrible. And- yeah, and even that Letterman interview came to light a few days ago from 2013, where he's just mocking her rehab, mocking her addiction. Bro, Family Feud had a question: What has Britney lost this year? And it was her kids, her hair, uh, money. <laughs> it's like on Family Feud. That's yeah, you know, that's insane. Dude. Yeah, it's weird how that was all acceptable. Man. And then when she snaps, it's her fault. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's, uh, it's just it speaks to the misogyny in this society. Yeah. It's it's shit that we need to keep an eye out for moving forward. You know, a lot a lot of these people are very rich and famous and privileged, but still, no one deserves to go through that. Like it gets to a point where the whole world is fucking bullying you. Mm-hmm. Of course, you're gonna go crazy. Um. Yeah, I mean, she's like someone too. Like where she was so famous, it's like, what's Christina Aguilera doing right now? Does anyone know? Wasn't she on uh, The Voice? I think she was a judge in The Voice recently. Okay, yeah, but like <laughs> what I'm saying is like, no, she she, she went through she, some shit. She was just as popular, but she kind of was able to take a step back and like lay low a little, pave a different career. Britney could never do that because it's just everybody's obsessed it's on about her. what it's it's just it's it's, it's sick. But there, there was footage of her in a, in a diner, and the whole diner was just full of paparazzi, mm. <laughs> like Kanye West says. Damn, they got me. This question here from Maddie Edits or Maddie Diltz. I don't know. We're gonna have to talk about that. Favorite coming of age film. I think this is a question we may have answered previously but uh i gotta look up examples that's some recent ones i think the best recent coming of age film that i've seen maybe call me by your name yeah lady Book bird's Smart. always one Ladies, for me lady i mean bird. super bad comedy but it, it very much is a coming of age story and it's one of my favorite movies of all time i think it's the best comedy of all time so it's hard not to go with that one you know i'm gonna say mean girls i think mean girls <laughs> it's it's a movie that still makes me laugh to this day I remember in film class in 11th grade, I put it down as my guilty pleasure, and my teacher just loved the answer so much. She was like, this shouldn't be a guilty pleasure. You should be uh, proud of this. You should be proud of this pleasure. But yeah, I'll go Mean Girls, my favorite. What's historically the best? Like The Breakfast Club? I guess The Breakfast Club is looked on as, and the, the Richard Linklater movies, I mean, even recently, Boyhood, Yeah. is considered by many people to be a masterpiece. Ferris Bueller is awesome. Um, very good. Moonlight. Yeah, it's coming of age. Ted is. Yours is 16 candles, right? Holes. (laughs) I'll say holes. I I fucking love holes, man. (laughs) Got my shovel. Shoes full of sand. 
Number one Check is uh, Breakfast tag. Club. My name is Caveman. Goes Breakfast Club, American Graffiti, Pretty in Pink, 16 Candles, Stand By Me. This question here from Shane Lisa, most anticipated 2021 March movie. What's coming out in March? Snyder Cut. Old Snyder Cut. Got Godzilla, right? I think so. Godzilla and Kong squaring up. Are there any other big releases that we're missing? I, here? I don't know. I really haven't been paying attention. It's just so hard if everything getting s- s- moved and reshuffled. It's like, all right, when they're out, like, oh, no. Coming to America. Put my notifications Jude's on. Black Messiah. That came out this weekend. I still have to watch that. I was going to do it. Uh, Wait, that's out? Yeah. I was going to watch it yesterday or the day before, but I never That's happening tonight. Why'd you get so hype? I'm watching it tonight. I'm <laughs> dying to see the movie. You almost snapped your neck in half. <laughs> I got a stiff neck, too. I'm gonna actually going to watch that tonight. Um, one of the re- Somebody I follow on Letterboxd, their review was, <laughs> I'd rather read a book about this. That's really? kind of how I feel when it comes to political movies, to documentaries. Like I said, the thing about Bowie, like, just listen to his music. I don't need to see the Bowie movie. I don't care what Bowie was doing in between studio time. Well, I very much use these kind of movies as like a history lesson too. That's I love, also I why love learning yes, about them. That's also yeah. why I don't like that because really? they're movies. They're not history lessons. There's some so, there's truth so a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you for proving my points. <laughs> Freddie Mercury definitely got his diagnosis before Live Aid, <laughs> and that's why the moment was so much better. And it's like it's it's a double edged sword because it's a story that. I want people to know, but I don't want people to come away with inaccurate information, you know? So many people are going to watch this and be introduced to Fred Hampton for the first time, but... Well, it doesn't matter. I'm going to watch this and then go on YouTube and get into a wormhole on YouTube, and then I'll learn the real facts. Yeah, as long as you go on the Wikipedia and you go to historical inaccuracies, right. click that tab, <laughs> read through it, and be like, eh, no, I'm going to believe the movie. That's the go-to, right? Never see a, whenever you watch a historical movie, you yeah. go right to YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> What's Except, right and wrong with the movie? Death of Stalin is the only movie that's 100% historically accurate. <laughs> that's facts. You should check very that true. out. You would very much enjoy that. <laughs> Ted's shook right now because he's like, is it? Yeah. <laughs> I, um, I can't tell if you guys are lying or not. <laughs> Watch it and you'll see. You'll see why. <laughs> we got a good one here from Elm. Elm, keeping the email questions alive. Shout out to Elm. Who or what do you believe was the biggest Oscar snub ever? For either Best Picture, Actor, or Actress. Mine was at the 2001 Oscars when Benicio Del Toro won supporting over Joaquin Phoenix. That is a big time, uh, not a snub, because Benicio Del Toro is very good in traffic. But that's when that... Who was Phoenix in? Gladiator. Oh. Yeah, he's Gladiator. Wow. Well, he wasn't the Gladiator. No, he, he was, was the up or down guy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that should have been the Oscar right there. <laughs> up and down guy. <laughs> the way that he just had us on our toes. What is he going to do? What is he going to do? Got a um, Coliseum on those. One that comes to mind now that a lot of people seem to agree with is Eddie Redmayne over Michael Keaton in 2014. The Eddie theory Redmayne. Theory of everything? Yeah, winning over Michael Keaton for Birdman. Yeah. I was so disappointed when that happened. It still hurts me to this day watching Michael Keaton tuck in his speech because he really thought he was winning. That was a good, <laughs> they were, uh, Did he really? That's, that's tough. I don't think it's like a huge upset, though. I heard people know before I do. they win. <laughs> No, I mean, especially the last few years, Eddie Redmayne is someone who he's put in some stinkers, man. Even in the sh- trial of the Chicago Seven, I'm like, get this guy off of my screen. Um, what what are the other big snubs recently? Maybe Mad Max not winning Best Picture after after it won like everything else, like everything that involves making a movie they won. Gone for with it. the Wind, be good fellows. I don't know if they came out the same year. Gone with the Wind. Uh. You know, Hitchcock never won Best Director. You mean Dances with Wolves? Dances with Wolves. <laughs> yeah, Dances with Wolves did beat Goodfellas, so. I know that there are historically some, like, big... St- that, that's not a great one. Saving Private Ryan lost to Shakespeare's In Love. Yeah, it's tough. Spike Lee has never won Best Director. That's crazy. What about, um, recently? Let's see. I mean, B- Green Book. Over everything. Yeah, everything was just <laughs> snubbed that year. Um... Who won the year Leo lost for the Aviator? Oh, that was uh, Jamie Foxx and Ch- uh, Ray. Yeah, can't blame him there. Cause I always think like Aviator is his best performance. I'm like, how come he didn't win the Oscar again? It's like, oh, yeah, Ray. I'm always upset that he was snubbed for Django because I think that is his best performance. That's the most fun I've had watching Leo on screen. And I really wanted him to get... Th- I think Samuel Jackson was snubbed too, man. Django is a year where you really could have had three actors in best supporting and mm-hmm. just chosen... Either of the three. Um, 
not either, but just chosen one of the three. But I know there are some big ones for director that always piss me off when I read about them. I'm like, how the hell did that David happen? David Lynch never won an Oscar. Right. It's cool that he's always nominated, though. Whenever he puts out a movie, they do recognize him, mm. which I always appreciate. And I th- think he may have gotten a Lifetime one, which I think is actually better. I actually think the Lifetime Oscar is better. Is Jake Jones Hold didn't win anything for Night- Nightcrawler? He even got nominated. Wow. Yeah, that's another big-time that's snub. It. Yeah, people were very upset about that. Inception didn't win anything? Chris Nolan? Yeah, rightfully so. You don't like Inception? Inception? Not not for an Oscar. What Oscar are you giving Inception? They said that because people couldn't follow the complex plot. (laughs) (laughs) Audience weren't aware whether they were seeing real life or a dream. No one can hear you. It's their problem. It didn't matter. It's brilliant. I don't know if you're reading something or... I was. Okay. All right, guys, that is the Nerd Soup Podcast for today. Uh, thank you for joining us. Wally didn't win anything? During this discussion. Which movie? Wally? In 2008? I think Wally won Best Animated Picture. No? No. Who won in 2008? Slumdog Millionaire beating out uh, The Dark Knight. Well, The Dark Knight wasn't even fucking nominated. And then the movie that won yeah. for that year, Slumdog Millionaire, are you kidding me? D- have you guys seen The White Tiger? Recently came out on Netflix. No, I haven't. Very good. I'd recommend it. Same writer from Slumdog Millionaire. He even takes a shot at his own fucking movie because he didn't like the adaptation. <laughs> um, <laughs> I wish he would have referenced The Dark Knight in this one. <laughs> it says the Academy decided to expand the Best Picture race from only from only five nominees to address the general outrage that Wally and The Dark Knight were not nominated in this yep. category. Yep, that's why we have... <laughs> and they never go to 10. <laughs> They've expanded it to 10, but they only nominate like 8 or 9 every year. <laughs> so stupid. All right, guys. Thank you for, for listening, for tuning in. Comment down below. Share it with your friends. Do all that good stuff. For Aaron and Teddy, I am Bo Oliver signing off. Don't for speak to me. Day. <laughs> See you guys later. Well, would you look at that? It's finally over. Hey guys, Bo Oliver here for one final send-off. Now, before I beg you guys to like and share this video, I'd like to thank our very special Patreon pledgers. We are very proud of the community we've been able to build here at NerdTube, and it would not have been possible without our Patreon supporters. You guys are the true MVPs of this channel. Everything I've said, you keep the fridge full, you keep the lights on. There aren't enough words to thank you guys, but we'll do it anyway. Thank you. And we have a few videos coming up that have been suggested to us by Patreon pledgers. My Hero Academia, Neon Genesis Evangelion, and Full Metal Alchemist will be reviewed by Marissa and yours truly and Castlevania which will be reviewed by Marissa and Aaron and if you'd like to consider donating to our Patreon page you can visit patreon.com slash nerdsoup and check out some of the rewards we offer to our listeners and really we'd like to thank everyone who takes the time out of their day to watch our videos Patreon pledger or not your support is what keeps us motivated to keep giving the world our opinions on movies and TV shows and video games and pop culture even though no one asked for it we're still here we're still yapping and we hope Hope you continue to join us. I'm Bo Oliver and I support this message.